Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video, Dusty here. Um, I've been working on this video for a long time, um, but I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna show you in this tutorial today, a full overview and how-to video of how to download, install, and use the Streamlabs OBS app, which is in uh, currently in beta right now for uh, Windows 7 and beyond. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to download it, how to use it, how to install it, and uh, this is a really fantastic tool that I've used for a few months myself, and I can't wait to show you guys kind of uh, as we dive in what there is to, uh, to get into here. So uh, Streamlabs, what is it? Streamlabs is a company organization that allows you and provides tools for streamers and content creators alike uh, to make their lives easier, and Streamlabs, uh, OBS or slobs, whatever you want to call it, is just uh, something else in the line of fantastic tools that they are providing to you. So in order to download this guy, go to streamlabs.com. I'll drop the link down below. If you want to follow along with this video, which I encourage you to do so, it will be linked up in the video annotations as well as the first link down below in the description. So you can basically just install it and then go from there. So what you want to do once you're at streamlabs.com is go to the option there, the green button that says download download beta. Now, if you're not uh, obviously uh, have if you don't have a Streamlabs account, you can basically go up uh, to, to create one, you can go to to log in here. And when you go to log into Streamlabs, uh, it's actually going to I'll actually log out of my account here and show you guys when you go to log into Streamlabs, it's going to ask you to log in with your Twitch or YouTube. So whatever your primary streaming account is. So for me, it's YouTube. So I'll just log in with YouTube, make sure I choose the YouTube account that I want to link up. And then once I do that, I allow Streamlabs to manage and do all of that that good stuff and uh, I would encourage you to uh, to not worry about that there I think uh, these guys are definitely uh, trustworthy so once you've done that uh, you can see here that you're gonna have another option a big green button in the upper left hand corner that says download the beta for Streamlabs OBS so again once you're logged in it's gonna look like this but when you are not logged in and you are just at the Streamlabs homepage, you'll see a big green button here so go ahead and click that green button I've actually deleted it off my machine so I can show you guys exactly what we need to do to get this guy up and running so once you've downloaded the beta here and it has basically downloaded all of the pertinent files click on that guy there that the exe file like you normally would go ahead and allow your computer to do that you're going to see something that looks like this here go ahead and click i agree uh, choose where you want to install the software on your pc and then once you're ready it may go through about a two to five minute installation process depending on the i guess you would say the speed of your pc once you're done go ahead and click finish and then leave the checkbox that says run Streamlabs OBS and this will actually create a little icon for you on your PC to just basically click a little shortcut and you should be good to go now all right, and once you've downloaded and opened the Streamlabs OBS file here and the application is running, you're gonna see something that says import from OBS or start fresh. Now, you could import all of your different settings and, and themes from OBS if you're using the native version of OBS. I recommend clicking this blue button here. If you're following along with me, that's what we're going to be doing. It gives you a clean and fresh start. So once we do that, you're going to see all of the beautiful things here that Streamlabs OBS provides to you. Now, with this version, you're going to see that it looks a lot better than just the native version of OBS. Now, obviously, OBS is free. I'm so thankful for what they're doing, allowing Streamlabs to basically uh, put a new, uh, a fresh uh, coat of paint, per se, on the application. But as you can see here, we have our editor, our themes, our dashboard, and then our live panel here. So obviously, uh, just like with OBS, we have our scenes and sources, which is how all of the magic is going to happen. So the first thing that we need to do is create our first scene, which is already done for us there. And if you want to create a new scene, click the addition symbol here. And basically a scene is a, uh, a group of sources that put together everything that people are going to see when they watch your stream. So if you want to say this is stream one, then that's what you can name your scene. Click done and you are ready to go. But obviously there's nothing there. It's a blank screen. So you need to go up here and add sources. So under the sources panel, same way as if you're adding a scene, click the addition symbol here under sources and you're going to see a few different things. All of these are fairly self-explanatory. Image, browser source, image slideshow, all of this good stuff. We're going to add a display capture, which uh, you guys 
pretty well know what a display capture is. We're going to go ahead and add that source now. And then once you've chosen your monitor, like I did, you're going to see here the YouTube channel that I have here. This is my monitor. You can see my mouse moving now. So that's kind of what we're going to be recording. Let's go ahead and add a webcam. So click the addition symbol there next to sources and then go to video capture device. Now, if you are a longtime OBS user, all of these things are going to look familiar to you. If you're not, hopefully this is much easier than if you would just go and use the normal OBS, uh, you know, I guess you would say application. Now, if you do, however, want to check out my tutorial on OBS as well, I'll have that linked in the description as well. So go ahead and click add source on video capture device, click done, and then it's going to pull video. As you can see here, I am now waving at you. It's going to allow you to choose the different devices that you have. So I have my C922 webcam uh, from Logitech hooked up here. And the beauty of the Streamlabs version of OBS is it gives you a bunch of kind of simplistic ways of making your stream look better. And it just makes things a little more easier and intuitive for the user. If you've never done this before, we can deactivate, we can configure the video. Uh, and with, with the configuring of the video, you can see here, we can change the brightness, the contrast and all of that good stuff. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of leave this here just the way that it is and click done there. And as you can see, I can go on my stream here and I can actually click and hold my webcam and drag it and it'll kind of snap into place here wherever I want to put it within my, I guess you would say my scene number one. So as you can see here, we have a video capture device, a display capture, and then you're good to go. Now within the sources here, you're going to see things that are game captures. You're going to see audio input capture, and we'll cover that here shortly. But the two that you need to worry about now are display capture as well as video capture, which will get you kind of started kind of where we are here. Now, again, a game capture is going to be if you have a game running, okay, and then you add a game capture and then the OBS Streamlabs OBS picks up that you had that game running. Running, it'll automatically capture everything going on within that game. Now, I like to, to, to stay with display capture. It gives me a little more flexibility and a little more, uh, I guess you would say, admin power over kind of what's being uh, done. And, and that's kind of how, how you would go there. Now, uh, underneath the mixer option here, which is going to be the next big thing you want to do, you're going to have desktop audio and you're going to have mic slash aux. Now, uh, desktop audio is going to be what people hear. So the desktop audio you want to capture from your PC. So you want the game audio or the songs that you're playing for your stream. You want them to be playing over your stream. And so you can adjust that here. So what you need to do is click the little gear icon here that says open advanced audio settings. And then we're going to see a few different things. Now, under advanced audio settings, you're going to see your desktop audio, you're going to see your mic, and you're going to see your video capture device. Now, uh, under desktop audio, I would encourage you to decrease that volume level down to uh, I would start at around 50. And then once you've done that, leave your mic at 100%. We can adjust that later. Uh, and then once you're done there, click the X get away from that. Now, under the desktop audio, click the gear icon there. So just click properties like I did there. And then the device is default. So so for me, I actually want it to be everything that comes into this here. So everything that comes into my speakers, uh, you need to figure out what your desktop audio is coming from. And then once you've done that, click done. And then now whenever I play audio, like on my computer like Welcome this, as you can see, that desktop to... audio there is going left to right. So I know it's picking up. So in order for you to test this, you need to play some audio on your PC and see if you get the lines like I saw here as if it's registering audio. And as you can see under my mic here, that's getting good reception here, but it's probably not the correct microphone. So in order to select your microphone, click that gear icon underneath microphone, go to properties like we just did. The device needs to be changed from default. So for me, it needs to be uh, my Scarlett uh, 2i2, which is my audio interface, and then click done. And then now, as you can see, it's picking up the audio from the microphone that I want it to pick up from. Now, once we've done all this, once you have your scene set up, you've got your audio ready, you've got your video ready, you're ready to play some games or you're ready to stream uh, for your business on your YouTube channel, whatever the purposes of this may be, you, my friend, are now ready to dive into a few other things. Now, We've, we've talked about the editor, which is this here, but the beauty of the Streamlabs OBS is that it also has a couple other things. So the next thing I'm going to show you is your dashboard. So underneath your dashboard here, once you've logged in, not only do you have the beauty of the Streamlabs OBS to kind of stream from here, but you also have everything that they provide on their website. So it actually shows you uh, all of your recent stuff, all of your recent donations and subscribers. You can go to my donations to see where people have donated to you. You can actually go here under your um, donation settings and 
can change that. You can add widgets here. So like all of the things that you see, let's say you want to add a, a donation ticker or a stream labels or event list, everything that you see people do uh, with their streams where things are coming up on their stream as people are subscribing, as people are donating, all of that basically can be done here. So like the event list, all of these here that are going to show as people are subscribing, we can basically copy. So let's go ahead and copy that. So let's copy the, the URL here, go back to our editor here, and then go to our sources, click the addition symbol. And then what you're going to want to do here is go to browser source. Anything you add from a URL will always be browser source. Click add source. And then what you can do is you can you know, change the name if you want. Click done. And then go ahead now and paste that URL that we just did. So we'll go ahead and paste that URL. Click done. And now what's going to happen is you can see now I have the event list here. As people subscribe and donate, it's coming up as a, a wonderful list here above my webcam. And that's not the only thing you can do. I mean, with the dashboard here, you can see that there's much, many more widgets. There's the goal widget, the stream boss widget, the chat box, the viewer count. Uh, there's so many things natively within Streamlabs. And if you guys want me to, I can do a much more in-depth video of this showing you how to set all of that up. But if you want to add any of these, you just do it via a browser source, which is where I showed you just a few seconds ago. Now, another cool feature is the, the themes that they provide to you. So basically, Streamlabs OBS allows you to set up and utilize all of these uh, scene themes. So basically what you can do is, let's say, oh, I really love, I'm playing God of War or I'm doing this and I want my stream to look like this one here. And then once you're satisfied with the way it looks, go to install overlay. And then once you install it, it, adding, it adds as a fresh scene collection in your editor. And so now under editor, you can see Basically, it's giving you all of these things. So as you can see, here I am live. Here's my, B my BRB screen, my ending, my offline. It gives you all of that stuff. And then under live here, when you go live, it's going to basically show you a list of things that are happening uh, minute by minute as people subscribe, as people follow you. Again, there are just so many different things that you guys can do. Uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already, download the Streamlabs OBS application. You will not regret it. Um, hopefully you guys found some value out of this. I truly believe that this is one of the better apps for people wanting to get into streaming because of how easy it is. Uh, and so it's one of those things to where I really think you guys should look into it. And so once you're ready, once you're done, go back to your editor. And then when you're ready to go live, you hit that big go live button. But you may be thinking to yourself, well, is that all I have to do? And you've got one more step. So the last step you got to do is go up here in the right hand corner where you see settings, go to settings. And then right here where you see stream, you've obviously got to choose your streaming service. So we'll change this from Twitch or YouTube or Mixer or Facebook, whatever we want to stream to. And then go ahead and paste our stream key. If you want to know how to find your stream key on YouTube or on Twitch, I have videos showing you how to do all of that stuff. I can link those in the description of this video as well. Once you've set up everything here and you've linked it to your Twitch or YouTube account, click the green done button. And then all you need to do next is go to the green go live button here. And then once you do that, it'll, it'll count down three, two, one, and you are off to the races. You are streaming. Now, I would encourage you a few pro tips here under settings. Uh, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is go to output and then go down here and look and see kind of what your bit rate is. Um, a lot of times Twitch and YouTube will let you know, hey, you're going to be lagging or, you know, your internet kind of is crapping out on you. You probably don't want to stream at this high of a bit rate. You need to play around with your bit rate and to see what your internet uh, can handle as you're streaming. Because the last thing you want to do is start streaming and people not be able to hear you or see you or your video is off sync or you're buffering all the time or uh, the quality is not as good as you think that it should be. There's a lot of great videos on YouTube uh, of showing you how to set up the proper bit rate for your internet. Now, you have to remember, if your internet's like one meg or something like that, you're probably going to be out of luck. But I mean, normally, if you're around, I'd say 5, 10, 15 download speed, you should be fine. But at this point, if you're watching this video, I assume you're at a point to where that's fine. Now, obviously, this wasn't everything. We're 17 minutes into this video now. There's so many more things you can do with the Streamlabs version of OBS, but this just basically touched the, sur the surface. I encourage you to click that link down below. Download Streamlabs OBS. I promise you guys, you will not regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, slap that like button, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and family, and I will see you guys in the next video.